We're going to explore some scientific and so psychological ideas about positivity and its influence in our lives, the powers of our minds, and how we can influence our brains and beings in more positive and healthy ways in our day-to-day -day lives. As human beings, we have the power of thought that can go in so many different directions. One of the key lessons of modern neuroscience is that the power to direct our attention, the fact that we can really direct our attention or whatever we want, has within it the power to shape our brain's firing patterns, as well as the power to shape the architecture of the brain itself. So when we start thinking and behaving in more positive ways, we're actually shaping the, the shape of our brain more in that direction. So we have the power as human beings to harness the power of our mind to cultivate our own well-being and well-being in our lives. And obviously, if, if we have well-being in our own lives, then it's affecting all the people around us. So by thinking positively, we're literally influencing our brain to, to literally become more positive. There's a saying, wherever attention and focus go, energy flows. What we habitually think about will start to become stronger in our psyche. And there's a Jewish saying also, think good and it will be good. Whatever we, we start thinking good and we actually affect the physical world more positively. We know science has proven that being positive and having positivity improves the health of our immune system. And so that obviously helps us stay healthy. So there's a study of positive psych psychology that suggests that being involved in something larger than our personal self actually creates a sense of meaning and well-being. And this is an essential part of the experience of happiness. For instance, when we give to others or spend on others, we feel more content than when we spend money on ourselves. This gives us, this is like a kind of well-being rooted in meaning. It's, it has connection. And this truly brings us inner and true happiness. So being personally happy, this shows that being personally happy requires that we, we need to expand our usually more narrow, defined individual preoccupations because we are built to be a we. As human beings, we're built to be a we and enter a more fulfilling state perhaps a more natural way of being when we connect in meaningful ways with others. A living organism links its differentiated parts and unfortunately without integration, it can suffer and die. So science shows that well-being and true happiness come from defining ourselves as part of the whole when we connect with others and with ourselves in real ways that we can break down the boundaries that isolate us and, and make us separate. So when we really clear our mind and work on clearing our mind, and we could really track the energy that is going between us and others, this helps us expand the ourself beyond ourself and show that we are truly in an interconnected world and we're a part of an extended community of all living beings. So like we're saying, our mind is within us and our mind is a relational, it's like it processes meaning that we relate with others outside of us through our mind. So obviously the health of our mind not only affects us, but affects others as well as ourselves. By being mindful, by connecting to our breathing, some use meditation, paying attention to our inner being, we increase our awareness, clarity, and acceptance of the present moment. The word for breath in Hebrew is neshima, which is connected to the word neshama, or soul. 
So this connection with ourselves and our breath and our being helps us get unstuck and it helps us get back in touch with our wisdom and vitality. It helps us take charge of the direction and quality of our lives, including our relationships with our family and ourselves. And this is the art of conscious living, when we're in touch with ourselves and with others.